This is the Porsche 911 996 GT3. And as such, it is the first GT3 product that spawned the whole GT3 bloodline. But is the 996 GT3 the purest? And is the purest the best? <laughs> The Porsche GT3 was introduced for the FIA Championships in 1999 and the production GT3 was also introduced in 1999 and had a lifespan in production from 1999 to 2005. There were two generations of the first 911 GT3, 996.1 and 996.2. The 996.1 generation ran from 1999 to 2001 and the 996.2 generation ran from 2003 to 2005. This is a 996.2 generation 911 GT3. Now you can't talk about an early Porsche GT3 product without referencing the Metzger engine. The Metzger engine was introduced with the GT1 Le Mans racer and was also introduced in the 996 production GT3. Now the Metzger engine has certain modifications from the production line such as nitride toughened crankshaft, titanium com rods and lightened pistons. This is the 996.2 GT3 and as such has um, the Metzger engine which produces 380 brake horsepower and 283 pound-foot of torque. For more details regarding the Metzger engine, I gave a full explanation in my 991.1 GT3 review video. I'll drop a link in the description below. Unlike the later 911 range, you can actually see the engine in the early 911 GT3 product range. You can't see much, but you can actually see it. The engine is placed rearward of the rear axle. Now in early 911s, this produced what was called the pendulum effect. So if you lifted just before a corner, the car could actually pendulum around. Of course, that was the design flaw and you didn't want that to happen. So instead of moving the engine further forward, what they did was they introduced suspension upgrades, which in effect designed out that floor. And these suspension upgrades, the, 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 the largest change was introduced with a 993 model where they introduced rear multi-link suspension. And that, that multi-link suspension was carried over into the 996 range and subsequently into the 997 range. This is the 996.2 Metzger engine and as such produces 381 brake horsepower and 283 pound-foot of torque. Now the 996.1 Metzger engine produced 360 brake horsepower and 273 pound-foot of torque. So you can see there were substantial upgrades with the 996.2 Metzger engine. Other advances that were introduced in the 996.2 model range were fly-by-wire and Vario cam. Now Vario cam in effect is a very technically advanced engineering approach to increase valve cam lift over a certain RPM, which of course increases power. So let's take you for a walk around of this particular 996.2 GT3 specification. First of all, the exterior body colour was optioned in basalt metallic black. Avid viewers of our channel will recognise this as the colour of my 993S. This colour shifts shade depending on how the light hits it. It's pretty cool. Moving around to the side, you can see that wheels are coloured gold. Now this is actually Ferrari gold, so they only preferred Ferrari gold over Porsche gold, so you had the, the wheels recolored Ferrari gold. It was an option that you could have carbon ceramic rotors, but on this particular car, the steels were optioned, as you can see, with the red calipers. If it was carbon ceramics, they would have yellow calipers. And for interest sake, is these are six pot calipers with four pot calipers on the back. The owner also introduced this GT3 scripting on the side of the car, which I think works because it lends itself in alignment with the wheel colour, so it works very well. Moving along to the rear of the car, you can see the definitive GT3 rear wing. Bold and proud as usual on the rear engine cover. And then further around to the rear of the engine cover, you can see the GT3 scripting on the rear engine cover in a very stealth design. In effect, black on black. Now unique to this particular GT3 
this car has had its suspension totally rebuilt by JZM and tuned accordingly. I noticed some substantial changes on this 996 GT3 when I was driving it just to this this position to displacement where we've done the walk around. The owner tells me that JZM adjusted the placement of the front front mounts for the shocks. As you can see here, they've actually adjusted the placement to tune the suspension better. This has resulted in very keen turn in. This car drives like a race car, but we'll get onto that a little bit later. The turn in is very, very sharp and there's no play. So it's, it's, you could say it's very, very sensitive with a sharp turn in. Again, we'll get onto that when we do the driving content, but I just wanted to go through some of the changes that JZM had made. In effect, rebuilding on suspension, tuning it to be more track focused, even more track focused than the standard GT3. They also changed the discs. So the rotors on this are provided by JZM2 and as are the pads, which are called yellow stuff. Moving to the front storage compartment, you can see here we've got all our camera equipment here. It's a fair amount of storage here. It's not a vast amount, but you could get a suitcase or two in there. It's fairly deep. Moving to the interior of the car, as you can see, it's very stripped out. It's very bare and very functional. And I think this looks really cool. You've got it quite bare here, so you can see some bare skins. It does actually have carpet, which was quite rare for the GT3 product range. Has the definitive bucket seats, which fit you really well. They're an absolute nightmare to get out of and pretty tight to get in. But once you're in, they, they are really snug around your kidneys and hold you really well. So great for being a track focused car. This car was also optioned with the part roll cage, which obviously is, is very useful for track days. As you can see, it's got black leather interior. It's got a full leather interior and black dashboard, black leather dashboard and black leather seats. It also has full four point harnesses and inertia reel. Unlike the Ferraris with the Porsche GT3 product range, you could actually option the full harness and inertia reels. Ferrari, take note. Now the GT3 product line wasn't designed to have a lot of storage space. So you do get some though. Uh, for example, this center section in the, in the console, the little bit of storage area there. You have a storage area below the CD storage bay. And you also have a glove box to the left. With regards to storage in the door cards, you've got this front storage section and you've got this armrest arm storage area as well. As you can see a Red Bull there to keep us going. Now these cars were kept fairly light because it's a GT3 track car at the end of the day or a production GT3 track car. So standard options were really no carpet. So this has been optioned in with carpets and this car actually has climate control. Now that wasn't a standard option. You actually had to option that in. It wasn't standard with a GT3 and we're very thankful of it because we've been a very hot, because we've got a very hot day today. So we're very thankful of the climate control. And I don't think, you know, having the climate control is gonna make that much difference with regards to weight. Now there's one key engineering aspect I haven't mentioned yet. Yep, the 996, of course, had a manual gearbox. Six speed manual. It's a very keen short shift manual gearbox, but more on that when we take it out on the drive, which is what we're gonna do now. video please give it a like very important for the channel if you're not subscribed please think about subscribing guys again very important to the channel to move us forward so driving the 996.2 GT3 first of all the driving position pretty much perfect these bucket seats really hold you in place and they're fantastic with regards to providing the driving position apart from for me because I have my length in my legs therefore I would like to be a little bit higher and you can't adjust them for height but it is what it is pretty much I'm in a perfect seated position here they're great for driving bloody awful to get in and out of <laughs> and that, for me especially with knackered hips and knees pretty much hell to get out of but it is what it is you, you sacrifice that for a great driving position the ergonomics of the car in, of the interior of the car are great you've got the standard 996 airbag steering wheel um, which was the the newer version that was provided after the 993 four spoke which was obviously provided with the 993 the previous air-cooled model 
the performance initially yeah love it very progressive obviously this is a 19 this obviously this is a 2003 car so it's 20 years old dash layout great you've got all the key dials that you need you've got your rev counter center um, you've got your speedo to the left the red line on this is 8200 so the 996.1 its red line is 7800 so on a 996.2 they push the red line up a little bit higher to 8200 a little bit of a side note guys the 996.2 Metzger engine, or the, I should say the 996 Metzger engine, because I think it covers the 0.1 and the 0.2, they're not the same engine, four stroke, etc. Obviously, the 996.2 produces more brake horsepower and more pound foot of torque, uh, 380 brake horsepower and 283 pound foot of torque. But if you bone this engine back in the day when this car was, was in production, you were looking at 40,000 pounds, guys. This car has the tuned JZM rotors. So it has the steel JZM rotors, so the brakes have been upgraded, um, but it still has the standard six pot front calipers and the four pot rear calipers, but the rotors have been upgraded and it has shielded brake lines. In effect, the flexible brake pipes aren't so flexible because they're braided. The pads on this are pretty much track pads as well. They're called yellow stuff yellow pads and they are actually colored yellow if you look at the calipers you can see the brake pads are yellow and they give you uh, more of a track feel you have to get some temperature into them to get them to really work well and they squeak a bit when you're driving slow when they're cold but that's to be expected with this kind of track focused car the speed of the steering lock to lock isn't what you'd expect or what you get with a modern Ferrari it's not as fast as a modern Ferrari um, which means you have to, you know, you have to take your hands off the steering wheel if you're turning, say, for example, a U-turn. You can't just keep your hands on the steering wheel and turn round because the steering isn't so fast. But with regards to sensitivity, the steering's fantastic. I can feel everything through the road. Now, whether that's because of the JZM magical touch that's been applied to the suspension and steering setup, or whether that's standard GT3, I think probably a bit of both. It's definitely been tuned by JZM, so it's been enhanced. Another straight section here. I'll shut up and let you listen to the engine. Steering is very direct. Come to a corner, turn in is great. I'd say it's one of the one of the best cars for turning that I've ever felt. When you consider that you've got all that weight hanging out the back, very well. It just shows you how well engineered this car is. The multi-link rear suspension has really helped a hell of a lot to tune out that pendulum effect of the rear end. Even though you've got all that mass over the rear end, quite honestly guys, you can't really feel it. You've even got that big ring, wing on the back as well, which is adding additional force onto the back. So you've got fantastic traction. Because it's a 996, you've got the front. 
fried egg style front headlights which has always been a downer on this car and always held it back and I've got to be honest I felt the same as well I did actually have a deposit down on the Cabriolet 996 on the new one years ago uh, but I cancelled my deposit decided to search out a 993 and that was because of the look of those fried egg headlights see steering there I've had to even though it's a sharp left it's the 90 degree angle left I've had to um, I've had to turn my hands over on each other because the steering's not fast enough to be able to allow me to keep my hands at the same placement on the steering wheel. But that's how it was with these cars. Brakes are great once you get some temperature into them. Visibility is fine, no issues with visibility from the A-pillars. Obviously in regards to the back because you've got the cage in the back, you've got the roll cage in the back, that reduces visibility and when you look for the rear wing as well you've got the rear wing there but the door mirrors are very good so that provides plenty of visibility your wits about you and if you've got different cameras of the road if we've as we've had sometimes on this sections on these sections of road that we've been driving then you've got to keep your hands and keep hold of the steering wheel you've got to keep your hands on the steering wheel keep hold of it because it will pull you into the side it's fast to change action it's fast to change direction and like I say a little bit nervous when you compare it with a modern day GT3 the modern JT GT3 was was direct as well and had fast steering had fast steering lock to lock and was sensitive in its steering as well. But I would say, shock horror, I would say this 996 has more feel than the 991.1 steering. And I loved that 991.1. So that's not taken anything away from the 991.1. But the steering on this is brilliant. Just love it. Now many people would say that the steering's too nervous, too edgy. But I love it, I love how it's been set up. At the end of the day, this is a track focused car. What do you expect? So to answer the second part of that question, probably not very helpful for you, but I'm gonna provide two answers. It depends on the GT3 experience you're looking for. If you're looking for like a touring style GT3, easier to drive with the PDK, with the fastest gear cog change, then without any doubt you're looking for the new modern style GT3, so the 991s, the 992s. If you're looking for more of the analog, the pure analog GT3 experience, the 996 provides that in spades. For me personally, I'd have two. I'd have the 996 GT3 for bunting it around, fast switchbacks and fast B roads and I'd use the 99 I'd, I'd buy a 991 for European trips and for and for some track use where it's very if you're really 
if you're really keen to get your track times down then you want the PDK for the fast gear change because the PDK is going to provide a lot faster cog shifts than ever you would with a manual gear lever. Not to take anything away from this gearbox and this gear shift is absolutely fantastic and the analog feel you get is unsurpassed. So that is my conclusion guys. Is the 996.1 the purest experience and the purest GT3? Absolutely, in my opinion. Is the 996 GT3 the purest and best experience? Again, horses for courses. Depends on the GT3 experience you're looking for. So to close out the video, if you enjoyed the video, please give the video a like, very important for the channel. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. It's free to do so, it doesn't cost you anything, and you can unsubscribe at any time you want. I must say a massive thanks again to JD Classics. JD Classics have provided us this 996.2 GT3 for, for review. It's been an awesome driving experience, it's been fantastic, and hopefully we catch some great content for you. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video.